Hello everybody and welcome to another tutorial here on NoiseJunkies.net. In this tutorial, we'll take a look at how to explore some sketch materials as well as the integration between sketching and also sub-polygon displacement with sketch materials. So, let's get started right away and I'm going to File, New, and I'm going to start by creating an object. So, for the sake of simplicity, and I think I said that once actually, I'm just going to create a sphere and then I'm going to File, but instead of going to new material like we always do to create materials, I'm going to a sketch material, which is over here. And I'm going to apply it to the sphere so, so, just so we can see how it looks like. Eh? You know, it looks pretty cool already. Now, some of you may be wondering why we should create 2D stuff in Cinema 4D. I mean, the point of a 3D program is exactly the three dimensions. But, you know, when it comes to creating those sketchy kinds of animations that you are required to do, it's much easier to do here in Cinema 4D because it also you know, gives a lot of flexibility in terms of camera movements and also a lot of possibilities in terms of the material itself. Here we have the presets and you can, you can choose from a variety of, of things. Uh, for example, this rainbow one, which is one of my favorites. You know, it definitely can create some pretty cool things. You can also have several uh, types of control levels like simple, intermediate, advanced. In the advanced option, which is where we're not, not right now, you have all those options in here and some of them I, I never actually bothered before looking at the tutorial but you know you can for example click on control stroke strokes and it kind of doubles here and you you can you, you can have a pretty man what's going on with me today but you can have a pretty precise control of things like the spreading of wow that's pretty cool actually you know the spreading of the stroke lines and all that stuff and the thickness you know how thick you want them to be and you know you have some render options thickness options um, what does that do yeah oh cool you know and that's really important for motion graphics that ability that you have about controlling all the colors for example as you can see here that's exactly what you can do um, so great yeah you can also apply that for uh, floors so I'm just gonna have a quick floor here apply it to the floor and it will see a lot because you know the floor is infinite and that actually happens in the borders so you don't see a lot but if you apply a light I guess you will be able to see something you know you can see the floor has those kinds of artifacts in here the problem with this light however is that it makes our sphere all black so I'm not gonna apply this light right now but you know the idea is that we can come up with some idea to kind of light up the floor. You know, I, maybe I'll, I'll create a light in here, and then I'll just duplicate it, place it on the other side. Oops, not there. You know, there's a lot of you know lighting tutorials that you can watch that I actually have, but the idea I wanted to show here is that even depending on where you apply the light, you know, the sketch material completely changes because. There's no uh, in-between in here. I mean, the in-between is, of course, a scale of gray, but it's pretty much black or white, and the borders, they never change. They are not affected by lighting. So, you know, that's, that's something pretty fun, I guess, but frustrating to some extent as well. And I guess, you know, you, you can definitely play around to light your sphere as much as you want it to light. So you can create, you know, the more lights you add, the more complexity you add to the actual scene. And as a consequence, the floor will also be brighter. So I guess you can also you know, decrease the intensity of, of those lights to 30. And you might have something smoother both in the floor and in, in the sphere itself. Yeah. So, you know, it's very, as I said in the beginning, it's very diverse. It's very open to whatever you want to do with it. And it applies just as well to other objects like uh, Pyramid. One interesting thing to notice is that I did not apply any, any material to the sphere. But if I render, you will see it has the rainbow. And you might be wondering why. And the reason why is because I applied that to the floor, remember? And when you apply to the floor, all the materials that are you know, over that floor will be affected by that same material. Unless you tell it to not do it. Or unless you apply a different one to the Pyramid. So... If you go to sketch material here again and just apply the simple one, it won't have the rainbow around it. Great. So that's our first case study here. 
Now I'm going to create a new project and uh, I'm going to create a sphere. So I'm going to demonstrate a case scenario here where you're going to be creating from a new material. Now why would you do from a new material and not from the sketch material itself? The sketch material itself has a lot more options and it gives you a lot more control. Here in the material editor it's much more simple. It's just the texture, sketch and you have those four options in here. However, there's a, you know, a very good point in making it here, which is it allows you to have all those options here that you do not have on the sketch material. On the sketch material, you do not have reflection or, or environment or sub-polygon displacement. You only have those things. Now, why am I bringing that sub-polygon displacement point? Well, it's because I just watched Nick Campbell's tutorial on sub-polygon displacement. And you know, I knew the technique before, but it's one of those old techniques you learn when you're starting to, uh, to to learn Cinema 4D, but you never use it, so you forget it. And I was just astonished by the tutorial. You know, it remembered me how great the technique is, and I just want to apply. But I give all the credit to Nick Campbell, Grayscale Gorilla. He just released a tutorial like last week, maybe a couple of days ago. Check it out; it's amazing. And you know, I'm just gonna quickly go through this here because it's his tutorial, really. But you have to make this view editable, otherwise it won't work. And once you make it editable, you can go to the material editor and go to the displacement channel. And here you just choose an image or a filter like noise and it will displace uh, your sphere like it. So, uh, so right now, so right now uh, it has this texture here. And you may be wondering why, because we didn't apply it, but we have it here. So if I delete it, 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 has, it doesn't have it anymore. Yeah, I know, you're probably asking how come, but sketch system has you know, a different thing. Once you applied a sketch material to the scene, the whole scene becomes sketchy. You can't really escape. So I'm gonna click on the noise here, and another great thing I learned in his tutorial, I never noticed this little arrow in here that shows the previews. Oh my god, so cool. So we're gonna choose the cell noise in here, come back to the displacement again and make it really high, the height, so that it really displaces through space a lot. And we're also gonna check sub-polygon displacement and route geometry. You can watch Nick Campbell's tutorial to know exactly why you were doing that stuff. And you can see we don't have a lot of effects in here. Okay, so once you check the sub-polygon displacement and the round geometry and, you know, whatever the number of subdivisions you want. Let's apply that to our sphere, whoops. Sphere, apply it, and once you render, you'll see it is placed everywhere. Now, the point of this tutorial is not so polygon displacement, but rather uh, sketch materials. So we'll go to here to sketch, and we'll choose cell. And in cell, you just have three main colors, and it will somehow look sketchy in terms of the coloring, but it's not even that interesting in sub-polygon displacement at all. So tips, maybe add more colors or less colors. So here I'm going to white a white to see how it looks like. And here I'm just going to want a darker, actually a black. That way it gives more colors to the actual thing. Now, you know, now you're probably thinking, well, but it, it's not really 2D. Actually, sub-polygon displacement makes the opposite. There are two solutions here. Maybe you can make it make this like seven meters, you know, not too high. So you know that looks much better. Or just quit that and use bump, which is another feature you cannot use in in what's it called in the sketch materials by itself. So that way you have another kind of option of using sketch materials. So yeah, I think that was a quick tutorial, a quick tip actually, and on how to use sketch materials. So I hope you all have enjoyed this and I hope it can be used for your next product. I'm Rafael, this is Noise Jenkins and thanks you guys for watching and stay tuned for the next one.